What's up, you guys? Dr. Gooden back with part three of chapter seven from the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning textbook. In this video, we'll be talking about how to train elderly populations. What are the program design considerations, the exercise selection considerations that we should be making, and how does strength training literally combat and reverse aging? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Jacob Gooden, professor of kinesiology at Point Loma Nazarene University. And as I said in the intro, we're diving into training elderly populations in this video. So let's get right into it. Now this comes from Drs. Lloyd and Fagenbaum, who wrote this chapter for the textbook. I've mentioned before, uh, both are, are great researchers uh, in the special populations. So this is gonna be really good content here that we're covering. <clears throat> okay, older adults. We know that there are age-related changes in muscu uh, musculoskeletal health, right? If you if you've ever if you are or have ever been around uh, someone who is older, who is wizened, who is who is uh, ripening, maybe we'll say, then uh, then you've seen this, right? Our bodies don't last forever; they don't stay young forever. Um, there's a loss of bone and muscle with age, and this can increase the risk of falls, hip fractures, long-term disability, etc. That's not a good thing. Bones become more fragile with age, and we'll see why, uh, because of decreases in bone mineral content, and this causes an increase in bone porosity. So the pores in the bone, in this trabecular bone, it, they actually become larger, and the, and the supporting uh, interwoven, supporting like lattice work becomes thinner and thinner. <laughs> After age 30, right, so I'm past that, there's a decrease in the cross-sectional area of individual muscles. Uh, with training, we can reverse that. So hopefully I'm reversing that a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> but uh, there's also a decrease in muscle density and an increase in intramuscular fat. So your muscles uh, literally become uh, more fatty and less dense and so that the, the muscle tissue itself is of less and lower quality as you age as well. It not only decreases in, in cross-sectional area but in quality as well. So some key terms we have to know when we're talking about older populations is uh, the first two are osteopenia and osteoporosis. Osteopenia is a, a decrease in bone mineral density between uh, one and two and a half standard deviations below the mean. Uh, so this, uh, you know, this is a, it's still a dramatic decrease in bone mineral density, right? 2.5 standard deviations, that's a lot but it's not quite as severe as the next one, which is osteoporosis. That's anything below two and a half standard deviations below the mean. So that's some serious decreases in bone mineral density. Again, that means that the bones are becoming more brittle and less, less resilient to impact forces. Sarcopenia, this is a less known term. I, a lot of people are, have heard the term osteoporosis and osteopenia, but sarcopenia, this is the loss of muscle mass and function um, or the loss of strength with age. And this is um, just as bad, if not possibly, one of the worst side effects of aging because it's, right, it's the chicken or the egg. Does the older adult population get out less because of sarcopenia or do they have sarcopenia because they get out less? And if they, and if they got out and were doing more active activities, perhaps osteoporosis would not be as prevalent because now we would be stimulating that bone to get, continue to hold on to some of its bone mineral density. Here's a look at normal bone. And we see that as we go down the line, we get osteoporosis and then severe osteoporosis um, in these other two pictures to the right. And with a graph as well, we're going age on the x-axis, age is going this way, and then bone mineral density on the y-axis. And you can see that uh, males start off with greater bone mineral density uh, greater than females, uh, but both males and females lose it with age, and wi and women especially in their latter few decades lose a ton of bone mineral density on average, and some of that has to do with going through menopause. And so we really want to be preaching, you know, healthy dietary intake of calcium and vitamin D from early ages, so that we can build up that bone mineral density as high as we can get it 
in our adult years. If you descend from a short mountain, it doesn't take you very long to get to the bottom. But if you build that mountain up higher, it takes a lot longer to descend. You have more to work with. And here's sarcopenia. This is uh, muscle strength, uh, not muscle size, but muscle strength. And it peaks, you know, relatively early in life, right? It peaks early in life. And then during your adult life, you could maybe you can maintain your peak with training. I would say you can keep, you know, slowly increasing with training, or at least I hope so, because I think I'm in my adult life. I'm not in my early life anymore. So hopefully, um, and we've seen that we can main, uh, maintain and increase strength if you do nothing, though, that strength falls off pretty quickly, right? You start to get into your middle age, uh, you become more sedentary, you get your nine to five job, you get home from that job and you sit on the couch because you're tired and you eat chips, like that strength can fall off quickly. Uh, and then in older uh, adulthood, now we have this, uh, this loss of functionality because our strength is so diminished, we don't do any of those uh, or as many of those active activities we used to be into. Now the key point here is that advancing age is associated with a loss of muscle mass, which is largely due to physical inactivity, but also perhaps to a reduction in testosterone in males. A direct result of this reduced muscle mass is a loss of muscular strength and power. So all the more important to get our older adult population into some sort of a resistance training program. Now, we also know that seniors are at an increased risk of falling. Uh, factors for this include decreased muscle strength and power, but also decreased reaction time and impaired balance and postural stability, right? So all three of these are uh, more neuromotor function and less strength and power. However, research shows that physical activity interventions can be very effective in improving neuromotor function and in preventing falls. So here is the responsiveness then of uh, older adults to resistance training. Seniors who participate in progressive resistance training programs can show improvements in all four of these areas. Muscular strength and power, muscle mass, bone mineral density, functional capabilities. I mean, this is incredible. Like you can get uh, octogenarians into the weight room who've never touched a weight in their lives, men and women, and get them on, on an adaptive strength program, and the results are incredible. I mentioned, I think I mentioned in the intro that some of my earliest clients were actually uh, older adults, octogenarians, even, uh, I think I even had a couple guys in their 90s, or they were approaching 90, they were like 88, 89. And one guy in particular, one individual, he was in this group fitness class I was teaching, he came in, and, you know, he could only quarter squat. He didn't have the range of motion. Some, something with his knee, I forget what it was. He's, he's fairly weak. And through training, after several months, I want to say it was about six months of training, he went from goblet squatting uh, 20 pounds in a quarter squat to full, like, ass to grass goblet squatting and 80 pound dumbbell and this guy was so proud of himself he was so stoked and it was awesome so you know now he can pick up his his great grandkids um, and and play with them and and his functional capacity was so improved um, because of his strength training so fall risk is going down the um, uh, he added a little bit of muscle mass the his power output, so the ability to quickly move and to catch yourself if you lose balance, that increased. His ability to just, you know, do some yard work improved dramatically. So it increased his quality of life so much. Um, so, so important to get our older adults on a training program. A key point here is that though aging is associated with a number of undesirable changes in body composition, uh, older men and women maintain their ability to make significant improvements in strength and functional ability, right? We're adaptable even in our last several decades. <clears throat> Aerobic resistance and balance exercise is beneficial for older adults, but, but only resistance training can increase muscular strength, muscular power, and muscle mass, right? All those other things are, are good, and if you go from doing nothing to doing something, then maybe you'll have a little tiny blip of an increase in muscular strength and power, but after that blip, the only thing that sustains that increase is resistance training. Now, here is how resistance training 
combats aging. It directly reverses it. So here in this column, these are all of the things that happens with aging. Decreases down the line in everything from muscular strength, power, endurance, size, uh, muscle fiber size, uh, muscle metabolic capacity, resting, uh, the resting metabolic rate. And the only thing here that increases is your body fat. Bone mineral density decreases. Physical function decreases. However, resistance training, it literally does the opposite. It increases everything except for body fat. It can decrease body fat as long as you couple it with a decent dietary intake. So program design considerations for older adults. As I mentioned, both aerobic exercise and resistance training um, are important components of a well-rounded program for older adults. Heart health, you know, super important. Uh, cardiac uh, arrest and cardiac disease is unfortunately very prevalent. We have to combat that. But resistance training, we cannot neglect it. Attention should, of course, be given to pre-existing medical ailments, prior training history, and nutritional status. Our older adults come with a lot more you know, training and injury history than your, you know, 20 year old athlete. Volume and intensity definitely need to be altered uh, throughout the year and maybe altered, uh, I, I would say, slightly more auto regulation for our older adults than for other groups. Uh, you know, they might come in feeling it under the weather. Maybe you just do a warm up that day and you do, you know, very light technique work. When you're working with seniors, you get used to being creative and also of listening to them, listening to what they're saying, because oftentimes they're in tune with their, with their bodies pretty well. And together you can work, work towards, okay, I think this is going to be the best intervention for you today uh, based on what you're telling me that you feel. So what about safety recommendations? Well, all participants should be pre-screened. So you want to have the doctors okay before you start a training program for sure. We want uh, warm-ups of at least five to ten minutes I would say even longer stretch out that warm-up seniors love the variety at least ones that, that I've worked with they love the variety of, of warm-ups and and the challenge of uh, you know some of these different warm-up tasks using various mini bands doing you know lateral movements uh, getting out agility ladders this is a great time to introduce a lot of these reactive and neuro uh, neuromotor movements that maybe are not part of your main session, but you still want to work on with these seniors. Um, static stretching can really be performed uh, before and after, or both before and after, because, uh, well, because it's not like you're going to hit super high intensities in your training session, most likely, um, and because even static stretching, moving from position to position for a lot of older adults, that's going to be an increase in the intensity of activity that they were doing just before they came in. So if we think about the ramp protocol, which we've talked about before, this can be actually part of it leading into maybe the, the more general warm-up. Um, and we wanna use resistance that doesn't overtax the musculoskeletal system. So we're keeping things light. It's similar to when, when you're training children, uh, we wanna go for a very cautious overload in our older adults. Uh, we also want to avoid the Valsalva maneuver in most cases. This can spike but, uh, blood pressure and cause dizziness. Uh, we don't want faints or falling, so avoid the Valsalva maneuver. That will also help you keep the intensity down. Uh, we want longer recovery. It just takes longer for the muscles to recover and for the central nervous system to recover after a, an overloading training session. We only want to perform exercises that are pain-free and in ranges of motion that are pain-free. So, you know, if, you, if your 80-year-old grandma can't squat all the way to the floor without knee pain, well, then don't do that. Just have her squat to a chair or do something different. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if the way that the older adults are training doesn't look like how we want, you know, our bros to train in the gym or our athletes to train. Uh, we want to overload their pain-free range of motion. And, of course, they need qualified instructors. And that's why you're here, that's why you're getting your CSCS to be that qualified instructor to help increase and improve the quality of life of the elderly populations that you're working with. All right, guys, that's all from this chapter, chapter seven, working, uh, working with special populations. Now, stay tuned because the next video, which comes next, uh, I'm not sure which chapter it's gonna be yet, but it's gonna appear somewhere on the screen once it's out, so click over there to keep learning keep studying for the CSCS test. I'll see you guys on the next video. 
which is largely attributable to physical inactivity. Uh, but, but uh, okay, do that over. Take two. 